So without further ado, Candace, and thank, thank you. you so much thank for you. being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Well, it's a real pleasure to get to be here. Um, I start off with great admiration for all of you for being able to survive 40 degree mornings, 30 degree mornings in springtime. <laughs> um, those who met me last night know that I am um, a, a creature of Arizona and Florida, so this is, um, I'm always impressed with people who can withstand the cold. So that, that already has you very high in my estimation. And, um, and also for being open to hearing, um, hearing this information and hearing this material and taking three and a half hours out of your day um, to voluntarily come and listen and learn. And, and I really hope um, by the end of today, you're going to have some more tools in your toolbox, some more um, opportunities to practice some skills, and um, take what you've <coughs> learned here today and, and, and do, as, as Vicki described so well earlier, what you're used to doing, which is was putting it to, into play with your daily practice. So um, I'm a little technologically challenged, so Darren's promised to help me if I mess this up. But let's see here. So, as a, as a presenter, I always like to know who I'm talking to, and of course, I've, I've had some information um, about who you all are, but I won't make you each introduce yourselves, we'll, we'll be here a little too long. Um, but if you could just raise your hand if you are a gal attorney, um, you represent children. Okay, a lot of you. Looking around, is this, is this most of your colleagues, or are there are there's more? There's more, okay. Just, just sort of out of my curiosity. And uh, if you're a CASA, okay, oh, a lot of CASAs, great. Um, and you'll, the, if you either work for DHHS or you're one of the county attorneys, could you raise your hand, please? Oh, our lone <laughs> person. Welcome, thank you. Um, we already know we have a judge um, with us today, which is wonderful. Um, any uh, social worker, caseworker, caseworker supervisor? Anyone who hasn't raised their hand yet and would like to raise their hand? No, okay. <laughs> okay, good. Um, so, one of the things that, that I've learned in, in doing trainings over the years is that um, it's really boring for me to be up here talking to you the whole time, even though I could probably stand in front of you and talk for three hours because I love to talk. So, my goal for today is to really get you guys talking to each other. Um, I will give you some, some information, I will, I will do a little lecturing, but I really am going to ask you to kind of step out of your comfort zone maybe a little bit, or maybe this is something that's really comfortable for you to do, and get in groups and talk to each other, um, do a little bit of self-assessment. Um, so some of these things that maybe you haven't done before, maybe you have, uh, so I ask you to bear with me. I think it'll, it'll help break up the morning, help put some of, this, some of the information directly into practice um, in, in various ways. So um, our first little moment of that is just turning to the person next to you or behind you. Just tell them what you hope to get out of today. You're free to talk to each other now for a moment. Just <laughs> what made you come here? Aside from the CLEs, OK? <laughs> you can turn to each other if you don't have, you don't have a partner. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Wasn't that got your blood flowing a little bit, right? <laughs> okay. So let me just give you a brief overview of um, of the game plan for this morning. We are going to talk about some practice. Um, elements. I will be giving you some substantive information, but I know you've had the, the helping babies from the bench training and, and you guys have been working around these issues for a while, so we won't take too much time with that. Um, I am going to ask you to do two self-assessments. They're very brief. They're five questions each. should be a snap. Um, when you, they, they should have a number written on them. And so these, let me show you, it's the blue paper in your, in your uh, folder. So on the front, you're just, we're not going to do this at this second, or you can if you want. Just write your profession, your role, so attorney, GAL, um, and the years you've been in that role. 
And you should have a number at the top of that page, okay? And you might want to make note of that number because you may be getting, or you will be getting, I should say, an email at some point with the same questions just to see if I did my job <laughs> um, in, in helping you with some of your attitudes, knowledge, belief about very young children in the system, helping you uh, move towards more agreement or less agreement depending on the question. So um, don't, don't fill them out now. We will have a moment to do that, but just wanted to give you a heads up of what's in there. Okay. The other piece that's in your folder is what I call theory to practice. And it's a, it's a white page and it's double sided. So this is going to be what helps us practice some of the skills today. So I wanted you to know that's in there. There's a green piece of paper. It's always good to familiarize with the materials, which is our case scenario for the morning. Okay? You thought you were going to come here and just sit. <laughs> we're going to work in a fun way. <clears throat> and of course, there's an evaluation in there for, for the end of the day. <clears throat> now, to incentivize filling out your self-assessments, we have uh, prizes for the end of the day. Um, and uh, uh, Melissa and Vicki picked the prizes. It's actually a book. Um, I don't know, I think it's in the corner here. Sorry, Darren. It's a book written by uh, Joy Ososki, who I know many of you have heard of or have met. Judge Cindy Lederman, Dr. Lynn Katz, and, and I helped contribute um, about child-centered practices for the courtroom and community about very young children. It's got a lot of practical information and um, system change information, some of which I'll be hitting on today, but you know, certainly there's a lot of information here. I don't have, have uh, time to do it in three hours. So that's the prize. I believe there's three to give away. So a little added incentive for the morning. The other thing you have in front of you is the brief, as, um, as Vicki mentioned. And um, again, with the, with the time constraints, we're, we're going to hit on as much as we can. But definitely, um, I, I would suggest that you take this home after the training and, and sit and look at it. There's a lot of really um, practical and substantive information in here. And it's in a very digestible form. Um, which, is, which is one of the great things about the way the ABA puts out its publications, in my opinion. Finally, you have questions every judge and lawyer should ask about very young children in the child welfare system, or infants and toddlers in the child welfare system. And these, again, some of these things we'll be hitting on, these are very concrete questions that if you can ask and find out the answers to, you're going a very long way in doing an excellent job in effectively uh, advocating for, your, for the children in the system. So it looks like this, okay? So that's what you've got, and that's where we're going. Now, I tend to interchange words a little bit, so I wanted to make sure we all know you all know what I'm talking about when I say infants, toddlers, preschoolers, babies. Um, babies are really infants and toddlers. They're, they're kids who are, in my mind, three and under. Okay, so just so you know. But I might be referring to a four or five year old. I, I like to use the word baby just so you know. Very young children, again, children zero to five. Um, substitute caregivers, I'm talking about relatives, non-relatives, licensed foster parents, so the whole gamut of people who are not um, the, the parents of the children. Okay, so we're all on the same page with that. This is one of my very favorite quotes. What happens during the first months and years of life matters a lot, not because this period of development provides an indelible blueprint for adult well-being, but because it sets either a sturdy or fragile stage for what follows. And, and this has sort of been um, my mantra in, in doing work with very young children and, and writing about very young children, is remembering this, is that we have as, as their advocates, as people involved in their lives, as people making decisions about their lives, we have such an incredible opportunity to really impact their current development and set them on a path for healthy development in the future. I think more than any other a group of children in the child welfare system. And that, this, this particular quote has always inspired me to when things seem a little bit overwhelming, which I think happens on a daily basis for probably everybody um, with this work, 
to remember that it's worth that extra effort, it's worth that extra push because we may not see it now, but we know if we're setting them on the, on the right path, they're not gonna become another statistic in our system. They have an opportunity. And that means working not just with them, but with the whole family system um, that they're a part of. So I really like that quote. And this is from um, a book called Neurons to Na From Neurons to Neighborhoods. Has anybody heard of this book? No? This is, it's, it's enormous book, but it's, it's filled with a remarkable amount of really uh, insightful, well thought through, very scientifically based information about uh, early childhood development. And it's put into a context that's very readable for those of us who are not um, psycho you know, research psychologists. I can read it, let's just say that. And it made a lot of sense to me. Um, but here are some of the highlights. Um, of, of what this, this group of researchers over a number of years looking at volumes of research, and Vicki can correct me if I'm, I'm off on this, volumes of research, um, what they've put together about very young children. From birth to five, children develop the foundation for their future linguistic, cognitive, emotional, social, regulatory, and moral capabilities. So if that's not if that's not bold and underlining the importance of our doing our jobs well and effectively with these very young kids, really nothing else can. Um, early experiences and relationships significantly impact a child's development. So the experiences that very young children have while they're in foster care, the experiences they have while they're having visitation or family time, and pardon me, I, I tend to go back to the word visitation. I know you all use family time, so just forgive me for that. Um, the, the kind of experiences they have in their childcare settings, the experiences they have in their, in their homes of origin. All of these things, even the little interactions, are affecting the way their brain is developing. Their brain is, is, is still developing, as you know, at this age. And so it's those experiences, and even more, it's the relationships and the connections and what they're learning from those relationships that makes a huge impact on their, their future development. Um, and again, it, it's, it's really, with very young children, it's almost all about relationships. Relationships are the key. So we'll talk a lot about that today and how you as advocates can really help foster and nurture and ensure that those relationships sustain. Um, and I already talked about this, the early, ex the early experiences, the good ones and the bad ones um, that really impact what happens in the brain um, at a very biological level. So, when I was a younger lawyer, um, many years ago, I had the good fortune of um, being assigned as a guardian ad litem program attorney. Our structure for child representation in Florida is a little different than what you have here. Um, I was assigned to judge Cindy Lederman's division. And that year, um, it was 1997, and that year she had been getting very interested in very young children. She had met Joy Osofsky at some point prior to that, and they had started a, a collaborative relationship about how can we do better for these young kids. She, she had learned more about the science of early childhood development, the statistics, and I was sort of in that learning phase um, with her as an attorney in her courtroom. And she expected us to learn right along with her and be prepared to, uh, to answer some of the questions that she had about, about the children, the, the babies coming to court. And so we all learned, and, and what really inspired me to kind of get involved with, with and focus on very young children was how incredibly at risk they are, um, just sort of in, in the world, but particularly when they come into the system. So they have the highest victimization rates, um, and the group that experiences the most neglect is under one years old. And this, this should be familiar to you just based on your experience, you know, the kids that are coming into your caseloads. Um, they're most likely to experience a recurrence of trauma or a recurrence of maltreatment, and they're most likely to die from the neglect um, or abuse that they suffer. So the other, they, they also have different, um, they're different than the rest of kids in care. They're the largest group in care. We know that in 08, 33% of all children with a substantiated case of maltreatment were under the age of four. Babies under three months of age are most likely to enter care, and it's probably not surprising to you. Um, and this is certainly something we see, you know, very obviously in Miami, that a third of the babies that come in 
to care come straight from the hospital. Um, I'm not so familiar with, with your, the issues here in Lexington, but I know in Miami and, and in South Florida, and probably most of Florida, substance abuse exposure is, is just huge. And I know you guys have a grant for that statewide, so I'm assuming it's a, it's a pretty significant issue here as well. <clears throat> I, need to, I need to stay on my time. I'm very bad with time. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm getting close. Okay. They also have different experiences um, when they come into care. So they remain in placement nearly twice as long. There's a lower chance of reunification, right? Does this sound familiar to you or is this sort of any of this surprising you? No, no opinion yet, okay. <laughs> They're twice as likely as older children to be adopted, which can be seen as a positive, but when you put it up against that lower reunification, rate, you know, there's, there's something there that's worth um, looking at and thinking about. Um, and they're more likely to be abused and neglected while in care, especially uh, babies. And this is, this is something very important for advocates because if, if we are doing our jobs well, we can really reduce the risk of babies being abused or neglected while in care. Um, we become one of the watchdogs. Uh, for their well-being while in care. <clears throat> and neglect, is, is, as, as you can see, is just a really major, major significant issue for, for this population. This is my least favorite statistic, <laughs> that we have 33% of, of very young children under the age of five re-enter care. These are national statistics. So that, again, how well are we thinking through permanency for these kids? What are we doing from the beginning to set them, set reunification or whatever other permanency option happens, setting that up for success? The other concern and the other thing that as advocates I feel is extremely important and, it, and, and really it came out when we put this publication together is because they don't talk, or because they're very little or very young, uh, it seems that some of the, the more obvious health issues that come up uh, for older children, and I think this has changed with more of an emphasis on younger children, we're kind of being overlooked. And we know that the babies who enter care, 40% of them, again, related to the substance exposure, 40% of them are, have low birth weights or premature. That, sets, that right there puts them at risk for, for health, sig significant health issues. Um, more than 50% have a chronic medical condition, such as asthma or something related to that. 50% have been prenatally exposed. 20 to 40% have growth failures. Growth failures can impact a whole range of other developmental components, um, not growing properly. And more than 50% have developmental delays. So they are not devel developing in a way that is um, putting them within the range of normal development. Half of the babies that are in care, half of the very young children in care. Um, and I know I don't have to explain to you because you've all seen Helping Babies from the Bench and you've all been um, educated on this, I but... Candace, if I could say, uh, some people... Oh, some haven't, okay. Not, probably not all and probably less than half. Oh, okay. Well, how many people... And she actually told me that last night, but I, in my head I think you all how have. How many people went to a Helping Babies from the Bench training? <coughs> Okay, many of you have seen Helping Babies from the Vent, have had the training, but I'm, I'm pretty sure, based on, on what I know about your community, that you're all aware that even very, very young children have mental health needs and mental, and mental health concerns. Children as young as six months old can show signs of depression. So this is, this is something that um, has really come to the surface over the past 10 years, um, 12 years in terms of folks like us who work in the court system being aware of what folks out in the clinical world have known for a very long time about very young children. That they, they the, the trauma, the, again, the life experiences that they have, even as young as six months old, they can start showing signs of, of, of mental health concerns. Um, so you guys can read the statistics. I think the biggest concern here is that 75%, and again, this is nationwide, 75% of the children who are showing mental health uh, issues in that zero to five range are not receiving the kind of intervention that they need. And that, that, is, that is something we can do, we can, we can make that change as advocates. That is something we have the power to, to change that statistic. So um, the other really 
really concerning thing is that 30% of infants who are showing um, mental health issues are having behavioral problems when they enter school. So it's, it's not just that they're feeling sad or feeling, um, or, or, or having issues as, as very young children. Again, remember, early life experiences that are creating these mental health challenges or concerns are molding the way their brain is developing. And so when they enter school, they have difficult times with that social emotional component that is so important when you enter school. Um, so again, just a, a compelling reason for us to be excellent advocates. And what about kids in your state? Well, the wonderful court people, <laughs> Melissa and Kelly, have provided um, some of this information. And I don't know if, if this is, is new to you, and I'm going to have to step back because I can't read that little tiny screen um, without the other set of glasses. But um, So if you see here the ages of 3A cases at removal, you see that 44% um, are under the age of 3. So you guys are about where the national, the national average is. Three to five, 12%. Six to 12, 29% over 12 months old, 15. I'm sorry, 12 years old, excuse me. Okay, removal to permanency. So again, that statistic about kids in this age range staying in care twice as long as other kids. Now this isn't a comparison to older children, but this is, this is time and care. So removal to permanency in Nebraska for children birth to five. 25 or four months. That's the biggest, biggest chunk of, of, of your population are in care. And again, that's not inconsistent with the, with the national the national data, but it's something that we as advocates can, can change. We really can, um, as, as daunting as it seems, it's something that we can do if we really put our focus on permanency and we really put our focus on pushing on it from day one, which we'll get to. So I think I've probably talked a little bit about this. You know, the reason I, I hope that you're all here is because you believe in some of these principles, that it is, that it is worth your, the, the extra effort that it does take to work with this very young uh, group in child welfare because you get, and I shouldn't use the word investment because that sounds a little callous, but really that's what it is. I mean, you get an enormous return on your, on your effort by helping these kids make it safely and healthily through the system to permanency in, a, in a, as brief amount of time as possible with as many safeguards and supports in place as possible so that you get healthy children who turn into healthy adults who do not come back into the system. And we know, we know there's a lot of research on the intergenerational transmission of, of uh, child abuse. I mean, it's, it's, it's fairly well documented. And so we have an opportunity, while their brains are developing, while their bodies are developing, to ensure that their experience in care and their experience in, in leaving care is one that sets them on the right path for healthy development. So, um, so that's that. Any questions? You're still awake? Anyone need more coffee? <laughs> okay, great. Um, feel free to jump in. I, again, it, it gets tiring for me just to be the one listening to my own voice all, all morning, but I promise you'll, you'll have some time to talk to each other whether you want to or not soon enough. Okay, so um, I had the good, like I said, I was, I was assigned to Judge Lederman's division um, as a young attorney, and Judge Lederman around that time, maybe, yeah, about 98, I think, she um, became the first judge to have a fellowship with Zero to Three, the National Center for Infants, um, Infants Toddlers, and Families. Am I saying that right? Yeah. And um, it was a really transforming experience for her. She got to be with uh, folks who do clinical work with this population, who do research with this population of kids, not just in the child welfare system, but just generally children birth to three. And uh, she was so excited about it, she said to me, now this is, when a judge says this to you, how would you respond? You have to do this. You need to apply and you have to do this. And so I said, of course, I have to. Um, and it was, an, it was really a, a transforming experience for me, both personally and professionally, to be in the midst of the great minds in the zero to three um, world, from, from 
clinicians to occupational therapists to um, physicians to developmental pediatricians. I didn't even know there was such a thing. <laughs> and, um, and, I ha and there was myself as a lawyer and another judge. And it really um, gave me a different perspective about very young children. And certainly, um, I happened to be pregnant with my first child at the time. So it certainly was um, transforming on that level as well as thinking, you know, to, to get all this information. And then it made me think, you know, everyone should have the opportunity to, whether you're a new parent, whether you're someone who's representing children or advocating for children, to have this information may, de delivered in a way where it makes sense from a practical standpoint. Where it's not just knowledge for knowledge's sake, but where it's knowledge for the sake of using it to, to a better end. And every, every single clinician, every single PhD, all these gurus in the field said, it is so important that the folks who are on the front lines, and they were talking about the attorneys, the caseworkers, get this information. Understand the science of all of this. Understand what the research says. Understand what the best practices are in order to help these kids. Because as many of us, I'm sure, know, there's not always the interventions and the support and the services being offered to these children and these families is not always what works for these families. We've all seen that happen. So um, I sort of from that experience developed these hallmarks. So this was a very long time ago and, and it, was, um, it was after uh, I had the opportunity to help develop a judge's guide for very young children with the ABA. They said, why don't we go ahead and, and write something for the lawyers? So that's how this practice and policy brief was born and it was really exciting for me because it was literally 10 years of me thinking about how do we convey this message to, how do we get this science to lawyers and, and, and act child advocates in a way that's going to actually help them do their jobs better. Um, because to me it's all about practice and practical, practical application of things. So I developed these hallmarks um, of effective child advocacy for very young children. Um, today we're going we're gonna to talk about elements of all of them, but um, we're really going to focus on the, the first and the fourth, about being child-centered in your practice and about being permanency driven. And you'll see as we go through, there's a lot of child development that comes into it. There's a lot of the infant mental health um, information that I've learned along the way that we put into this brief. And again, this was, they have me as the author, but I had a lot of support and, and help from the ABA and, and just sort of influence from folks like Joy Osowski and, and Cindy Lederman and Lynn Katz who have educated me over the years. So, um, so really the, the hallmarks are being child-centered in your practice, research-informed, holistic, and permanency driven. And really I just want an opportunity, how cute is this picture really? <laughs> how could you not be inspired? Um, so these hallmarks are, are, they're really not linear. They're, they're interdependent, they're equally important. Um, the things, the, 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 the different elements under each hallmark could go in mul under multiple hall hallmarks. So I don't want you to think of these things, oh, I'm not getting all the information because we're only talking about two today. Everything is in here if, if you want to look at that. But we are going to hit on what I think are really the most essential aspects of, of being effective uh, for this population. Um, and, and really, again, there's, there's practical skills and tools in here, but it's, it's, a, it's really about creating a framework and a mindset of how you're going to approach this work, which is possibly different from what you've, what you've done so far. Okay. I put this slide in here so I wouldn't forget. <laughs> if you could take, it should take you possibly two minutes, could take you three, to just do the first, the, it should say self-assessment one at the top, which is on the back of the cover page. 